Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We ask that you establish us in you. We live, we move, we exist only in you. You are the giver of all life. You are the self-existing one. All the rest of us, Father, exist only in you. You are the only I am. We are those who depend on the I am. So, Father, we continue to give you all the love and worship that is yours, that came from you, that flow through our lives and help us to love and have attributes like yours. We ask, O oh Father, that you receive our love, our adoration, and that you continue to transform and change our life as we look at the affairs of this life and this world. We know, Father God, that this world is just a mist and a blink of an eye. But for those who live in this world, the years do come slow, one after the other, and the decades do take time. But for you, in which a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day, it is but just a moment of time. We ask, O Father, that as we look at your prophetic word, that you cause us to have our eyes turned to you, and not to the things of this life or this world. And we constantly remember, Father, that you're building the things that are eternal, and removing the things that are temporal. That only the things that are in heaven will last and the things that are built upon your word will last. Everything else that is not built on your word, not built on our Lord Jesus Christ, not built upon the love and the life of our Lord Jesus, is but straw and stubble and hay that is ready to be consumed and burned up on the day of judgment of believers. We ask, so, Father, that we may be those who build upon spiritual gold and spiritual silver, spiritual precious things that this life does not give or offer. Thank you, Father, that you open the eyes of our understanding, that we may know the hope of your calling in all the riches of your inheritance that you have for us in the saints. Cause us to know your resurrection power and the power of your Holy Spirit. We thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. We have been uh, having different prophecies. And last year, we had a prophecy about the three uh, miracles that was uh, to happen last year. And I mentioned that uh, 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 it did not happen because we were not fully obedient to receive some of the presence and the glory of the Lord. We were supposed to have uh, spent a day in Pergamos on 20th September and uh, wait upon the Lord and the Lord wanted to bring forth a transfiguration and uh, that did not take place. And because that did not take place, uh, the signs and three signs and wonders have been uh, postponed, not cancelled, but postponed, and uh, we're looking forward to it this year. And also, it is also linked to the two queens. Remember, there's a prophecy about two queens in Europe, and uh, the two queens are supposed also to, to uh, go home uh, by the end of last year. It is also tied to the transfiguration. And this year, there will be a new level of presence and power that will be released. But let me bring forth uh, the visitation that the Lord has. And this one was received an account by Aruel. And uh, then afterward, I give uh, some of the things that I received uh, on this year. And this was a download that was uh, received uh, on the 28th of uh, December. About as the year was coming to the end. Remember that every word of prophecy needs to be called to account. So the Lord never misses. When the Lord says something, it must come to pass. If it does not come to pass, we must diligently seek the answer why. We need the answer. And that's why as the year comes to an end, we were seeking and praying, Lord, why? Is it because we have failed? 
Remember that in the Bible, sometimes different things happen. When Jonah prophesied that in 40 days, Nineveh will be thrown down, at the end of 40 days, it was not thrown down, and he was disappointed because his prophecy didn't come to pass. But the Lord showed in the book of Jonah that it's because of his compassion. And because the people repented, and so the Lord extended time for them. That was a different case. Then in the book of Daniel, uh, when the 70 years were up, Daniel was concerned. He was already keeping tap on the prophecy of Jeremiah about 70 years. When the 70 years were up and it was not coming to pass, he was very concerned. And look at his prayer in the book of Daniel. He never blamed God. He said, Lord, it's our fault if it never came to pass. Uh, at least he had an answer. So what we are telling you is nothing new in the Bible. In the Bible, Daniel was praying and saying, Lord, why is this not coming to pass? It's our fault. Forgive us, Lord. And so the same way, when the prophetic word, because we treat the spoken word with the same reverence that we treat the written word. And when the spoken word did not come to pass, we need to repent. We need to seek the Lord. And the Lord gave an answer. This was his answer. And uh, this morning, it says, I was worshipping and I got on my knees, lifting up holy hands to the Lord and just praying for a spirit of wisdom and revelation to be able to do what I need to do. And then he received his blessings of wisdom. And um, uh, then he says, I worship some more and I ask for great mercy. And I heard the voice of the Lord say, Come, Eruel. The Lord said, This, the Lord said this a few times. And then I was taken to the new heavens and the new earth, where I had been taken many times to this bench in front of a small river. Behind the river is a beautiful tree that the Lord has shown me. And then behind the tree was a hill filled with beautiful fruit trees. I saw Jesus and the Father, and they were sitting next to me, the Father on my right and Jesus on my left. Then Jesus began to speak to me. He says, he said, Eruel, I want to talk to you about the two queens. I said, thank you, Lord. I have been praying a lot about them and I'm so concerned that I have brought reproach on this move. Please forgive me. I have mercy on me. Jesus said, Ariel, all the timelines for this year, this is 28 December, which was 2015, all the timelines for this year, 2015, of the things that were supposed to come early have been delayed. The queen's death would be delayed. The judgment on my house of those who were supposed to die has been delayed because you and Pastor Johan did not obey my word. And thank you for all of you looking on who look so holy and righteous. <laughs> and it says here, All these were contingent on your obedience to all things I have spoken, but especially because they were tied to the transfiguration. And that was supposed to happen on the 20th of September. All these things, the Lord says, were tied to the transfiguration. Jesus continued and said, Do not worry. All the things that have been shown to you will happen. Now the things shown are the three miracles that happened in Singapore. Growing on the new lake, blind man, and uh, the heart condition thing. Uh, it says uh, where the pacemaker will disappear and the scars disappear. Uh, and the Lord says, all the things 
that being shown to you will happen. It is just the timeline has been delayed. The timeline because of your disobedience was returned back to a modification of the original timeline and now things have been given more time. However, the timeline has changed. It is not as long as it was. So don't assume that it's going to change after wow, it's going to be many years time. Mm. I believe it is very short and everything that was spoken last year now belongs to 2016. I repeat, everything that was last year is 2016. And this time we have learned some lessons. We have learned some lessons about the creative miracles. And um, remember the last Thanksgiving service we had, Brother Leong was here and he's a man with a pacemaker. And then uh, uh, we ended the service. And uh, then uh, after the whole service ended, the Lord indicated if we had extended the service some more, we would have seen that miracle. So this year, we change all the miracle services to Friday. So that, in case we need to stay back, no one has an excuse. And if it eats into the Friday all night, so be it. If the miracle service lasts until uh, Saturday 6 a.m., so be it. And it lasts until Saturday 6 p.m., so be it. If it lasts until from Friday, we pray until then we look around. Wow, it's not Sunday morning. Let's start the service. So be it. But our attitude has changed. We are now prepared to stay true. To see true in worship and praise. So there are some changes we have made. Uh, we learn from our mistakes. You know, it's... it's, it's uh, uh, it's human to make mistakes, but it's important to learn from the mistakes. If we didn't learn, then something wrong. So that's what we have learned about waiting on the Lord, uh, giving Him more time, uh, giving more worship. Uh, when the Lord says something, He wants to do it, we need to let Him do whatever He wants and learn to wait on Him. A tearing meeting, I call that. So we improve on that. Uh, we're looking forward to the three miracles this year. Now here are some things that the Lord said about the two queens. The two queens. Now everything is tied to the transfiguration. And the transfiguration is taking place this year. This year. And uh, I cannot let you know when because otherwise the rest of you will come all just taking photo and picture. <laughs> and we don't want a Japanese tourism there taking place. You know, chuk, 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 chuk. And, and no. Uh, it, everyone just spend time in the Lord and pray uh, and, uh, and the Lord's own choosing. We just worship the Lord. And uh, so it says, our Lord says, now things have been given more time. However, the timeline has changed. It is not as long as it was. It is shortened. But the timeline is dependent now on the transfiguration and the level of my presence and power manifests. But be assured, this is the Lord saying, be assured, all will happen as should. As should. Everything will still happen. But when it will, ha when it will happen, it's subject. Jesus then says, Eruel, the things that were supposed to happen needed a certain level of my presence and power to be released. The transfiguration was key for this. And then Jesus explained. In the book of Acts, you see Herod struck down. Uh, there's no quotation here, but it's found in, in Acts chapter 12. Remember how Herod uh, 
uh, was getting all the adoration and, and false worship and people say, oh, this is the word of God and not of man. Acts 12 says the angels struck him down and he died. That's the New Testament, not Old Testament, in Acts chapter 12. So this was what Jesus was referring to. In the book of Acts, you see Herod getting struck down. How this authority was dealt with is different. Why did Herod get struck down for receiving worship, but Caesar, the Roman Caesar in Rome, who receives worship at the same time, did not get struck down at the same time? And Jesus answered himself, his rhetorical question. It was because of the level of my presence and power on the region was at such a level that the authority Herod who was directly over that region was judged. Because of that, because of his presence and power. Now I pause there. Herod was over the area of Judea and over this area. And in Jerusalem, Judea, in all those regions, the Holy Spirit was manifesting greater and greater in power. Herod's death occurred in Acts chapter 12. In Acts chapter 5, the power of God was so great that the shadow of Peter was healing people. Then the Lord said, shadow healing will repeat too. We will have times in this move when the shadows were also healed. Everything in the Bible will be repeated. And then in Acts 5, you also see people in the church get struck down. Ananias and Sapphira die within hours. And that is in Acts chapter 5. Then in Acts chapter 6 was the growth of the church and the appointment of seven deacons. And then the church continued on in great power. Within Acts chapter 12 itself, the first part of Acts 12 show that angels were manifesting because after James, the apostle, was killed in Acts 12, they also arrested Peter in the same story of Acts 12. And when they arrested Peter and locked him in prison, the angels supernaturally broke all the prison doors and brought Peter out. It was a supernatural event affecting natural event. So you can see the glory of God and presence was very strong. And Herod is the same one who commanded Peter to be arrested. So remember, he had done a lot of things that was going against God. And then the time came when he was having his normal worldly ceremony and he gave an oratory and people were saying that, uh, trying to say that he was God and he was struck down. We remember the context. So Jesus was talking about how the presence of God in that region affected the rulers around. So if the rulers didn't live right with God, they also get killed and judged. It's very important to have the presence and power. So that's what he's talking about. Uh, whereas the same presence was not in Rome. But in the same presence that the church in Rome had risen up and a great presence, it might have affected even the Roman Caesar. So the presence and the power of God in the region can affect the natural rulers of the land. And the transfiguration was supposed to take place in Turkey, which more or less is like the bridge between Middle East and Europe. And of course it claims it wants to be part of Europe. And it would have affected, if it had taken place that, the European sector that is there. So that's what Jesus was talking about. And it says here that uh, Herod was directly over that region was just because of that. My presence and my power was not at the same level where Caesar was, and he was not dealt with the same way. This is important 
Because in order to release the judgments, I wanted to happen, Jesus said, I wanted to happen. And for those authorities to go home so that they don't block what God is doing, it needed the transfiguration present to be released. So up to this point, I've explained about the three miracles and about the two queens. And it has been postponed, not till the next year, to now it's 2016, but to this year. And things are going to happen very fast this year. It's going to be compressed and shortened. That's a lot to say. It's delayed, but not that long. It is shortened. Plus, other things that happen, going to happen the year, this year, will also happen. On top of that. Then, after the Lord has spoken and answered our question, the Lord added some more things. The Lord said, this is His warning to everyone. Israel, I also want to give a warning to those naysayers. That means those who are going to criticize the move because of this delay. Those who are going to go against the move because of this delay. Those who are going to go into unbelief because of the postponement. That's what the Lord said. He gave an actual warning. Israel, I also want to give a warning to those naysayers who should who would speak against this move, Pastor Johan, and you for the delay. So you persecute and speak against us because of this delay. This is the last warning for you. Remember, I have given you this word, and the word was delivered via thus says the Lord. I've given you this word before year end, so everything from a prophetic sense is valid. Because the Lord is saying, this is, thus says the Lord. And so he says, don't play around with his word even when it's delayed. He says, however, here is the warning to those who speak against you and this move. Remind them that a servant before his own master stands and falls. In other words, when we deliver the word from, of the Lord, we are servants of the Lord. If we fail in the delivery, or we through our disobedience cause something to be delayed, we have to answer to our master, Lord Jesus. That's what the Lord Jesus said. We have to answer to that, which we did. Remind them that a servant before his own master stands and falls. I have dealt with Pastor Johan and you. Yes, he did. And shown you great mercy. But those who speak against you for what happened and the delay will be judged. All the naysayers who say, see, it didn't happen and speak against the leadership and this move will be judged and when the delay has come to an end they will be judged and struck down with all those whose time has come to an end that's the Lord's word and so we appeal to all keep an open heart to the Lord Always be like Gamaliel. If you don't understand it, say, even if we cannot be for it, let's not be against it. Gamaliel stand. Uh, and of course, it would be better to be open and watching. And, and this part is me, not the Lord's word. I'm going to add this. As I spoke to some of those in Sydney, I said, look, are there any people on the planet now, any church, big or small, are there any people on the earth with enough faith to pray for growing of new arms and new legs? 
Are there any prayer groups out there? Pray for this kind of miracle. If your answer is no, not that you know of, perhaps there may be some individual. Then I said, we are doing things that no other church or ministry are doing. Give some grace. Not only do we have a desire, a lot of people all over the world desire to see the signs and wonders. And the works of Jesus. We don't just have a desire. You know what we have? We have a mandate. We are told by the Lord specifically what miracles will take place. That's not a desire anymore. Do you realize that? To which group on the planet Earth, big or small, mega church or mini church? Has the Lord ever said, in one of your meetings, I'm going to grow a new arm and new leg? As the dust says the Lord. If you don't know anybody else, and we are the only one venturing into this area, shouldn't you be praying and helping us? And you see the reasoning? I'm trying to reason with your heart. And not just all you, all you here supporting. Online, the people are listening to the messages. Shouldn't you be helping us? Because there are no other groups brave enough to tackle this. We ourselves are not that brave. We are only brave because of the Lord's grace. And you know why we are brave? Because we believe we are heard from the Lord. We have seen some signs and wonders and we have what we call a mandate and a word from the Lord. And I believe, you know, in some of the downloads that we have for USA, I can't read all because I want to give the prophecy for 2016, but I'll give more of these details on the last week of January when we pray the three days prayer especially before we go to the U.S. In some of the downloads, and of course it is not all of this is going to happen this year, in some of these downloads, but as I perceive in my spirit, not as a lot, but as I perceive a lot, over the next two, three years in U.S. as we launch. Among some of those things, are visions of a, a meeting near the mall in Washington, D.C., there were hundreds of thousands of people. And then in another vision, subsequent vision, there was millions of people gathered. And during some of the meetings, there were the signs of Moses demonstrated. Turning a rod into a snake, water turned into blood, and a sign of leprosy on the hand. With doctors and scientists verifying it on the spot. Because we always work with doctors and scientists in this type of miracle. Every miracle we must put under the microscope. If it's a sign, and it is. And among those things was this part that I point to. A man came who was a dwarf. And here Ariel said, he saw me. He says, I saw a man who was a dwarf, and you, that is Pastor John, asked him questions. I then knew everyone has been tested beforehand. And there were doctors who were there who verified the sickness condition. It was a dwarf. Then you say something like, in the name of Jesus, and it was all on camera and millions of people, the dwarf grew up suddenly. In the history of mankind, there is no dwarf 
who can grow to normal. This is one of the reasons. And this comes with a that says a lot. The Lord didn't give a timeline. But and then there are others. There is also a healing of a girl, red-headed girl with Down syndrome. Instantly, as she was prayed for, her face changed to a normal face. You know, Down syndrome has a certain uh, uh, figurement, uh, this figurement on the face that is obvious. And then there was another person who had an accident, and his arm and leg was cut off. The arm grew, the leg grew. Now, these are some, and then there was also a lot of transportation. There was a vision where we held four meetings in four different cities, simultaneously. And as I finished one meeting, I walked down the staircase, boom, I was in the other one. And I finished, I boom, I was taken to another one, transportation. And there is no other group with a dust says the Lord is going to happen. We are privileged. That it is not just something we desire, something that people dream of. You know what we have? We have a dust says the Lord. So any Christian out there, I would appeal to you. A servant is answerable to his own master. But I want you to know the servants that you're looking at are entering territory where no man has gone before. When no Christian has gone before. When no church has gone before. When no ministry has gone before. Join us. Pray for us. So that we will not miss God. Because when those things take place, you know who will benefit? Our Lord Jesus Christ and Christianity as a whole. And every church and ministry that loves the Lord will be blessed. We're doing it not for ourselves. We're doing it to expand into borders and territories that no Christian or ministry has dared tread on before. We did say we work with angels closer than any other group. And the angels have loved to do things. Not because of our ability, but because He has shown us this grace. Alright. So in that sense, the Lord says, remind them, remind them that a servant before his own master stands and that uh, God says those who speak against the move because of the delay they'll be judged and struck down with all those who are going to be struck down anyway last year and then he added this and this one is part of my prophecy too along with the dogs and wolves and those of my house under judgment and there will be a great cry as in the time of Herod, when Herod killed all the children to try to kill me, says the Lord. There will be weeping, like Rachel weeping for her children, and not comforted. So it shall be when this judgment comes to my house and the earth, and the delay of judgment is over, there will be great weeping. Then the Lord added these words. Uh, a. Royal says, I was gripped with the reality that the Lord Jesus spoke to me. And then the Father spoke and said, and started to speak. A. Royal, do not be afraid. You have been shown great mercy and kindness and Pastor Johan before you. I have used your failures as a testing. There are many waiting on the sideline, waiting to see before they believe and embrace this move. 
some have failed and fallen away and been replaced. But this is another warning and mercy I have allowed for those who are waiting to believe based on what they see or don't see. Instead of based on what the Holy Spirit is witnessing to them in their hearts. Now this second part, the Lord was trying to speak to those who are waiting only for miracles before they enter the womb. And the Lord is saying, Right now, even without miracle, you can ask your own heart, the Holy Spirit in your heart. Is this move real or not? Let hear what your heart is saying. Is what these servants of God speaking true? Is it in line with the Bible? Is it what God is doing and saying? And then check in your heart what the reply is. Because if your heart replies and say, this is of the Lord. You know what the Lord says? That's enough. He says, Instead of believing based on what they see or don't see, you believe based on what the Spirit tells you in your heart. Jesus and the, here's the Father says, They must not wait to believe. They must believe based on the witness of my Spirit. The Holy Spirit is bearing witness in your heart. Now because I'm showing you great mercy, thank you Father, the Lord says, I am giving the voice that cries at midnight great amplification that will resound throughout the earth. It will come quickly and there will be a great shaking. Not like the one in the time of the tsunami, but the amplification of the voice that cries at midnight will cause a great shaking. And it will shake the peoples of the earth to the core. Eruel, Pastor Johan has been given revelation on this and what it means. As the Father said this, holy fear went through me. And I said, yes, Father. So that's the download that the Lord has. And we have explained on the three signs and the two queens. And so anyone who asks, who read the prophecy will still be on, online, but I will update with this latest prophecy so they can see all the updates and explain the previous one, the next one. And uh, the thank those who have done that. I think Colin sent me an email showing the prophecy. Said, this has taken place, this has taken place, and everything. So it did show some things that have already taken place. And uh, now, as we look forward to the year 2016, more things have happened. The first thing as you read here from this word from the Lord that everything that is good that has been prophesied last year is supposed to happen which means the three miracles and the, the taking home of the two queens is now also this year. So watch and see, it's also this year. But again, same condition. It was based on me and Eruel Pressing into the Lord and receiving the manifestation of the transfiguration. Which is why this week, no meetings. Let me seek the Lord. I would love to ask for 40 days leave, but I cannot. So, I'll start the Bible study next week. But I'll be preaching this coming Sunday. And we want to wait on the Lord. And really make sure that we can plan everything the way the Lord wants and receive everything the Lord wants. We ourselves need to receive a higher measure, a higher measure of presence and power. And so, we're going to seek the Lord of that. And that's what we're doing. And so this fast is good. It's happening in the middle. But here are some of the things that the Lord also is showing that will happen uh, this year. And I'm going to bring it together with some scriptures. And remember, at all times, the most important thing is love, grace, and mercy. 
Right. Let none of us be judgmental over anyone. Remember, even those who oppose the move, show love, kindness, and mercy. Because they might not know what they do. Only the Lord knows the heart. It's not for us to judge. Firstly, Isaiah chapter 6. I'm going to read the scripture and talk about the prophecies that will happen. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter 6. And you will know the quality and the nature of the prophecies we give for. We will always give scriptural verses. Then we will give you extra biblical revelation that's in line with it. Then we will also tell you what we hear from the Lord. It says in verse 1, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings, with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, with two he flew, and one cried to another and said, Holy, 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 is a lot of hosts, the whole earth is full of His glory. Number one, there will be many Uzziahs who are taken away by the Lord this year. Some of those already spoken of last year. This year, there will be many. If you read the story of Uzziah, Uzziah was generally a good king. A good king who was not perfect. A good king who stepped into areas he should not. And then he died. He was a king, tried to be a priest, he died. And it's also because of pride. And the first judgment that God will bring forth in the year 2016 is a judgment on all pride. Whether the pride be in the body of Christ or the pride be in the secular world, the Lord says, it is time. You know the verses in James chapter 4 and 1 Peter. God resists the pride, correct? And He gives grace to the humble. And sometimes we don't see Him resisting. The process seems to be going on and on and on and on and on and on. But even Nebuchadnezzar, the leader of what we call the Golden Empire, was judged in the fullness of time. And what's happening is God is accelerating all things and this year is a call to humble ourselves in fasting and prayer. 2014 was a year of judgment, part one. 2015 was a year of judgment, part two. Now part of the judgment, 2015, dropped into 2016. So I was asked by one of the twelve and says, Is 2016 also a year of judgment? I said, only on those things which are carried forward. But generally, 2016 is not a year of judgment. It is a year of transition. It is the year when we enter into something new. That's why all your preparation should have been finished last year. This year, we step across the Red Sea. And this year we're actually going to the Red Sea. Hallelujah. Except we're not sure about Eddie going there with a rod and parting it. You're training yourself right for the next nine months. <laughs> or the priest stepping into the river Jordan and the Jordan parted. But symbolically, this year is the year of transition. All that you believe for, all that you dream, that you visualize this year the Lord opens the door for you to walk in which is why the verse read by Deborah was good be strong and of good courage 
and go forth in the that which the Lord has for you. And this year, February, by the end of this 40-day fast, we have gone forth to the United States. And the United States only has six years. And in six years, because of signs and wonders, not only all of you as a but the whole world will hear the voice that cry at midnight. All will take place in the six years as we launch more. This year is a year of transition. Don't just focus on Uzziah dying, two queens dying, three kings dying, two jack of trades dying here. People are like, don't, don't focus on that area. Yes, people will be going home. And there will be people going home that you never expected. Because this is a year of transition. Not everyone who goes home, goes home because of sin or something wrong in their life. So don't be judgmental. Don't say, oh, I knew he, was, he, he should die. And that one should die. And don't start predicting because of this, you know, you know which beggar pastor must drop dead and die and all that. Please don't. You're looking at the wrong thing. You look like that, you yourself something wrong. <laughs> you know, you might be actually, you know, in the midst of say somebody will die, you hang up. I mean you yourself die. So don't focus on this other part, transition. It was time for Isaiah to rise up. In the year. Remember, in the year. Not the same day, not the same month. But in the year of many being removed from this earth, both of rulers of the earth and of men and women of God in the ministry and of many Christians, your heart and mind is saying, how many pastors can tell? So many until you can see there's no coincidence. You will be awakened to the fact something is happening here. When you say, what? Well, this man of God just died. And then remember Job? Job, when the disasters came and one of his servants ran. I don't know why. All the servants died except left one to give the bad news. It's almost like the devil wants him to heal the bad news. He killed everyone and said, Is that? Then the devil tell his other little devils, Let that one go to give Joe the bad news. So he ran with half burnt shirt or half thing or half rock or half naked. And he ran and said, I said, I'm going to tell you this. Oh, all the sheep are gone. All the camels are gone. All these are gone. All your children are gone. All gone. One after the other. No coincidence. Remember Joe? This year is like that. So while you're still reacting, Oh, this person died. Ah. Then you turn around, Oh, this person died. Ah. Turn around, Oh, this person died. Ah. Oh, this person died. Ah. Hold your horses. Behind all these people going home, a great thing is happening. The Isaiahs are rising up. Do you know why people have to go home? They have. Because the, until they go, the new ones cannot rise. And God is taking them home to allow the transition to take place this year. The new figureheads. Remember the European prophecy. The young, uh, the, the young man in Germany, by young, I mean 40, 50 years old, and a young man in UK who will lead Europe and then a young man in France that will join them. God has to make space for this arise. And also in the church and in the ministries of God. Because some of these established ministers are so influential. God says, enough! And he removes all. And then people say, oh, where do we look to now? And everyone is shaken. They have to look to the Lord. And then they realize 
in their very midst are people who love them. The new generation will rise up, which include, of course, some the first generation will be on the sidelines waiting. And of course, second generation who will be waiting the sidelines will rise up. For the Isaiahs, the Isaiahs, the Uzziah died, the Isaiah comes. So the you goes out, the I comes in. And the Isaiahs rise up in order for God to do a new one. Technically, even though he was a prophet already, he didn't have the voice that God wants him to have. Because Uzziah was very influential. Until he died, in the same year, all these rise. So this year, the good news is a rise of really, really godly people. Beginning to find their place in where God wants you. And these are the Joshua's who will be waiting on the sideline under the shadow of Moses. And it's time for them to cross the Jordan and launch into something that they have never had before. Uh, in a sense, this is like a new beginning. Point two. You can ask the question to answer the second service. Point two. In the book of Daniel, book of Daniel, and towards the end of the book of Daniel, we see Daniel chapter 10. In Daniel chapter 10, as Daniel was fasting and praying, Gabriel appeared to him. And Gabriel says in Daniel chapter 10, verse 12, Daniel has been fasting 21 days. He says, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. For I have come because of your words. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, for I have been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Now notice, all these are angels are working with all the natural kingdom. He says he was with the, with the kings of Persia even before he came to Daniel. And on his journey to Daniel, there was this opposing fallen angel that came against them. Then he says, uh, usually we read the content of what he's saying but the content is basically about the 70 years so most of you know that by now but the sidelines, the messages in between inference of what was happening in the background and uh, then he says here uh, verse 20 chapter 10 do you know why I have come to you? he asked Daniel and now he says now he says after you see, what happened to Gabriel after he delivered the message? See, that's what we're interested in now. He was with the prince of Persia, and he says, after, in after, I have come to you, he said, do you know why I come to you? And now, I must return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I have gone forth, indeed, the prince of Greece will come. But I will tell you what is noted in the scripture. No one holds me against this except Michael, your prince. In chapter 11, verse 1. Also in the first year of the iris, the me. I, says Gabriel, I, even I stood up to confirm and strengthen him. And they control how many kings in each kingdom can rise and fall. It says here, Now I will tell you the truth. Behold, three more kings will rise in Persia, and the fourth will be far richer than them all. They even know which king will be the most, the richest. By his strength and through his riches, he shall stir up all against the realm of God realm of Greece. Now, why are we reading this? This is a historical epic battle going on in the in the political times of Daniel 
which nobody sees. Only Daniel knows all these things. The world just sees things happening in the human level and they thought it's only human. Ah. If Gabriel didn't strengthen the others and me, you think the others and me can come up? No. If Gabriel didn't push back the prince of Persia, you think the Medes can come up with the Persian so strong? See, they are controlling. The devil is not in charge. God is in charge. And God allows what He allows, and this allows what He doesn't allow. Which comes to prophecy number two. It is the destiny of China and Russia to be the greatest power, Russia first and China second, during the decades to come. And they will reach the height of their power after the tsunami, which happened in 2029. From 2029 to 2034, this will be the two greatest power allowed by God. Allowed by God to rise because no one can rise without God. Read Daniel chapter 2. It is God who removes kings and sets up kings. He is the one who allows or disallow. And by 2034, both these nations are so strong they fight a war. And Russia will win, China will sue for peace, and then they continue to coexist as number one and number two. But now we are in 2016. Russia, the Lord says, these are the words of the Lord. Russia or the angels. Russia and China are rising too fast. So he must strike them down to keep them at bay. For their time has not come yet. From now, 2016, until the year 2022 and 27, it is more the rise of the power of US, USA and Europe. And so, Many people asking, and there are some books, I am also aware of what's happening in the secular. We are not ostriches that hide our head in the ground and don't know what's going on. I'm aware of the many books written by different authors and economists that predict the great big disaster, recession that's going to come. They are right but wrong in their time. It will not happen in 2016. It will not happen in 2017. It will not happen in 2018. It will not happen in 2019. It will not happen in 2020. These are still the prosperity years. So God loves even though they are weak. You ask me to be strong. With the coming of the next year's president, and this year is their running year before they elect the president for 2017. All the prophecies are still true. And with the rise of USA, there will be the rise of Europe. But because Russia and China wants to rise up, you will see in this year 2016 a cutting down of Russia and China. Things will keep happening until they say, oh, what is the world is happening? Because it is not time for them to arise. And the angels are pushing them down, not humans, not just economic forces. There are angels that say, stay, stay. You cannot rise there. And they will create and allow different things so that they keep on trying to rise but cannot rise. So this year, you will see, because they are too strong, Russia and China being dealt with in many ways. And then the opposite happens. USA becoming stronger. 
much against everybody's surprise because we all know their currency is just print, be, printed money. And Europe also rising. So that these are the nations that will control the world or influence the world to some extent. Uh, so that's the second part of prophecy. And the second part of prophecy is based on observing, seeing the work of angels, and something God allows you to hear what the angels are saying, and also what the angels are doing. I know one thing. Our angels have been assigned into Russia and into China to push them back. How it was going to work out in the natural, you will read in the news in this year. And also, our angels and angels of God have been sent in the USA and in the Europe to push them up. To make them rise up. And then you will see the side effects in all the natural world. There's a second major thing that is going to take place this year. Third major thing, other things that we'll touch on in the second service. Uh, we preach a short one, maybe a question and answer. And uh, third thing, we look at Joel chapter 2. In Joel chapter 2. It starts with, and we all know this prophecy. This prophecy has been quoted in the book of Acts chapter 2. In the outpouring of the Spirit, they quoted Joel. Now if you read the book of Joel chapter 2, you wouldn't see any place where it talk about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, Acts 2. You have to infer it and to be able to see where it takes place. In fact, the book of Acts only started quoting uh, chapter 2 from verse 28. Verse 28, which we all know very well. It says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also on my men servants and my, on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood, fire, pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood. Before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord, and it shall come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. I want you to notice this. You've been teaching on New Jerusalem. Every time you see Mount Zion, it's a due thing. Mount Zion refers to the city of David. Mount Zion in the book of Hebrews refers to New Jerusalem. This prophecy also tells us the rise of the glory of New Jerusalem. And even though it was partially fulfilled in the book of Acts chapter 2, I want you to know, Acts chapter 2 only fulfilled up to verse 29. Where are the wonders in the heaven and on the earth? Not fully correct. This year has already begun. Just last week, some people saw a phenomenon in Canberra. A big ball of light appeared. Scientists classify it as ball lightning. If you do a research on ball lightning in the internet, Wikipedia, everything, you find that some of them are unexplained. Where well, are they explained? No, do they know how, what causes it? What causes a plasma ionization? What they saw is a natural side effect. What I saw was the Archangel Raghu RL commanding all his angels, millions of them, to do a work in all of Australia to change the weather pattern because of what we did on Snowy Mountain. 
there will be unusual signs and wonders that the scientists will explain with something. But there will be signs on the earth and signs in the heaven above. Between now, this year 2016, to the rapture, and you thought the world weather is changing, not just world weather, the whole atmosphere of our solar system seems to be different. Because all the last year is, is already done. All the 30 angels have realigned the boundary between the pristine universe and the warfare universe and have pushed them all to our solar system and the planet Earth. The side effect of that done in the spirit last year, 2015, will start this year, 2016, with strange phenomena in the sky above us. And you think that we have normal meteorites coming and going. Do you know what it's like in the tribulation? The things that happen destroy one third of the sea, one third of the trees, one third of rivers, one third of plants and all those things in life. The earth is like exposed suddenly like to a meteorite belt that keeps pounding the earth. That's the worst case scenario in the tribulation. And what I'm saying here is between now 2016 to the worst case scenario when big giant things that keep falling on the earth in the tribulation, it is a graph that goes upwards. So you begin to see more and more strange signs and phenomena on the earth below, the sky above, because the whole creation is groaning with the impact and the pressure that we put on by the archangels in redrawing the boundaries. But here's the good news in point three. There is a new outpouring this year. And when it says blow the trumpet in Zion, it is the news of New Jerusalem. The New Jerusalem glory. Why was I teaching about New Jerusalem glory for the past five sessions? And then I'm continuing this coming Sunday to conclude it. New Jerusalem glory. Because it is to prepare us for the New Jerusalem glory outpouring this year. It will have side effects like Moses' face shining, side effects like uh, transportation, side effects where in the meeting suddenly you might see and people might see visible and light and glory upon your lives because of the interface of New Jerusalem glory this year. And this year, to those who are hungry and seek God, Fasting and prayer. See, this is a year to humble ourselves. In a transition year, what do you happen? This is the transition year. You know how important transition year I always told people, even in your personal life. In a transition year, fasting and prayer very important. Because you don't want to miss anything that the Lord tells you. And in the transition year, this is a year of transition. In this transition year, we must fast and pray a lot. Spend time a lot with God. Because many, many outpourings are taking place. Liken to the book of Acts chapter 2. Outpourings. This year is the outpouring. This year has been a sign. Acts chapter 2 all over again. And you say, what must I do? Do what they did in Acts chapter 1 and the beginning part of Acts chapter 2. Do what they did. And getting prayer often as you can. And when the outpouring comes, it comes. When the time comes, it comes. But this year, you will see an outpouring. That's the third thing that will take place. Now, we have some more. But I'll deliver that and uh, finish off this sermon in the second service, part of it, then open for question and answer. Let's go to God in prayer.
Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy that you established upon each one of our lives. We look forward to this year, a year of transition. No doubt, Lord, we will bear the impacts of the judgment that is falling. Where, like our Lord Jesus said, the wolves and all the dogs are being slaughtered. But Father, we as your people humble ourselves before you. We want to flow with all the fullness of your kingdom. But this year, you're pouring out your spirit. And those who are hungry and desirous after you will be brought into a high dimension that they never have before. Let your will always be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Let your kingdom come. We commit ourselves to you afresh, Father. When we begin to see the signs and wonders we feel this year, it's going to rock the core of every day. When we begin, Father God, to see the prophecies being fulfilled this year, we will be shaken to the core because we know God is real and He's visiting the people, calling out unto Himself a bride worthy of Him. Father, we have heard so many times that Jesus is coming and Jesus is coming. Indeed. You have allowed the Antichrist to be born last year, false prophets in 2004, and you have already established a boundary between us and them. And this year is the transition year where finally we cross into that which you have for us. Thank you, Father, for everyone here and what it means personally in this life. The things that everyone will cross into, the things that they will transcend into. Speak into every heart and life, Father, and establish it so clear without a shadow of a doubt that we know, Father, finally the time has come. Thank you, Father. Bless your people. Bless their angels and strengthen their angels. And we all bless you, Father, for your mercy and grace. Thank you for forgiving us, Father, for our disobedience on the 20th of September. Thank you for your mercy, Sean. Thank you for the lessons that we have to learn to wait upon you. Thank you, Father. And this year, Father, as we begin this year, we begin it with fasting and prayer as always. But also we are readiness to spend more time waiting on you. So that when this outpouring that is a sign for 2016 takes place, may not a single one of your people miss it. And it won't be just in one place like in Acts 2. It will be many places simultaneously as your spirit pour out in volumes that had never been seen before. Thank you, Father. Let your glory and grace be great. And all honor go to you. In Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Bless you.